coffee hour welcome to coffee with our morning host we broadcast a host of programs like current topics newspaper headlines and music 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 on radio sri lanka tune in every weekday from 7 to 8 am Lincoln will there with Ryan Stone Kaba here on Radio Sri Lanka on 97.4 and 97.6 FM island wide and uh, we are crossing over to the studios uh, and I'm handing over the microphone to uh, Sharifa Tahir to uh, interview senior professor Tishan Jaisinga of Department of Civil Engineering University of Morotua over to you Sharifa Thank you very much Ramesh and yes we do have Professor Tishan Jha Singer with us today. Uh, he is the Senior Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, University of Murtua as you very correctly mentioned and today we are going to talk about the field of construction. So initially a very good morning and welcome to Coffea. A uh, very good morning to you. Thank you very much for gracing <laughs> the studios today. So today we are going to talk about the construction field. So let's also uh, specify on the general trends and outlook of the industry. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll uh, start by looking at <coughs> what is the contribution of construction industry and uh, it is uh, about 6 to 7%. In some years it can go up to about 7%. So we are talking about something like 2,500 billion to 3,000 billion worth of work or every year, and it's a massive amount of money. So we are talking. We are not talking about in millions. We are talking in billions. Thousand millions multiplied by 2,500. So that's the figure we are talking. Mm-hmm. That's and huge. That's huge. So basically, it's bigger than the telecom sector. Telecom sector is only about two percent, whereas construction sector is a massive contributor to the uh, GDP of Sri Lanka. So we need a healthy construction industry, but unfortunately, uh, we had a few problems. First one is Easter attack in two thousand nineteen. and then uh, you know we saw the uh, covid-19 confinement or shutdown so people are confined and you know we could not continue and then 2022 we saw the economic downturn which led to uh, you know people not investing in construction so uh, this uh, and also there were few other problems there were few other problems uh, one problem was you know there was a huge amount of money to be paid to the work already done by the government of sri lanka now fortunately uh, by the end of last year government of sri lanka has cleared most of the bills it had to pay to the contractors so that's a positive sign and also you know uh, another problem that we had was you know suddenly the rupee devalued from 203 to 360 it went up to 360 70 but now it has come down to 320 to 30 range so when it went to up to 360 all the construction materials increased drastically in, yeah drastically like you know a bag of cement which was 800 rupees used to sell around 3000 rupees now it has come down to 2000 100 rupees although the retail price is 2350 the actual selling price uh, you can buy a bag of cement in market for 2000 to 2100 rupees even after the increase in vat so so the prices have come down it has gone up shot up very high and uh, during that time what happened was you know people thought oh, uh, you know i you have budgeted my construction at Hundred thousand rupees per square meter. Now it's going to cost two hundred thousand rupees per square meter. So I'm not going to do this construction. I'm going to stop the construction. So everybody stopped. Huge amount of unemployment was created, and 
uh, you know, we have weathered the storm. Now we have come to the level that again the prices have come down. But, uh, you know, still we have some teething problems to be solved. But, uh, you know, we are in a positive note at the moment. So that's the outlook uh, of the construction industry in a nutshell in Sri Lanka. So let's also identify specific sectors within the construction industry. Yeah. Actually, one of the key sectors is domestic sector, like, you know, people constructing their own homes. That's a key sector. And uh, when people buy goods, they pay value-added tax right. So, so it, it comes directly, the benefit comes to the, uh, directly to the economy because government is getting a revenue which can be, you know, reinvested. Then uh, we have the large building sector like, you know, the property development, uh, construction of apartment buildings and uh, investors constructing office buildings. One example is, uh, you know, Maga construction company uh, completed, Maga 1. Mm -hmm. they are now they are doing Maga 2. So it is all rented for software companies and all that. So we need space because Sri Lanka is a thriving software industry and a uh, lot of sp office space is needed. Although we say we are working from home, still you need office space to run companies. So likewise, you know, we need buildings in Colombo with uh, office space, apartments, houses and in addition to that we have infrastructure that is uh, roads, bridges, airports, mm -hmm. hydropower schemes, irrigation schemes, this, this is a vast area, harbors and also most importantly now we, are go we have reclaimed 600 acres of uh, from the sea at Port City and uh, this land has to be developed over the next 40 years with massive number of tall buildings because it's going to be a financial hub of Asia one day because you know it will it will start challenging one day it can challenge the position that Singapore has taken but it's a long way but we have a good start because we have the land now land which is free, free in the sense no buildings, nothing we, and the infrastructure has all, is already in place with four lane and six lane highways mm -hmm. within the, the 600 acres and uh, now it's time to start constructing buildings so that uh, people can start businesses in this particular area. So, so we lot of factors are very positive. The underlying factors are very positive and uh, on the other hand we have made a massive investment in roads so the road network is very good what you have to do is maintain it you don't have to carpet roads the roads are carpeted and they are wide what you have to do is maintain them so likewise underlying factors are very positive in Sri Lanka despite the economic downturn we experienced uh, 2022 and I'm sure we are on the path to recovery because uh, IMF has been very strict with policies and what we need is strict guidelines and good policies, consistent policies and uh, in the in tw from mid-2022 we have gradually moved in that direction so one and a half years have, has already passed and uh, so still you know so see the same policies are continuing which is a good sign because one of the key problems we had was we did not have consistent policies and changes, sudden changes in policies can drastically affect uh, industries like construction sector. Yes, because uh, I think uh, construction is something which takes a very long time. Yes. So you plan it yes. beforehand. So when things change, it can get a bit... Uh, exactly. Uh, difficult for people to continue with the project or whatever they intend to do. So let's also, right after a short break of music, talk a little bit about uh, the evol how, how the construction industry has evolved and about uh, the technological advancements, Professor. Over to you, Ramesh. You're listening to Radio Sri Lanka. Well, it's precisely 7.28. A very good morning to you. And we are in conversation 
with the professor Tilak, who's Tishan, talking, Tishan Jaising. Tishan Jaising. He's talking a lot about construction. So uh, let's also touch on the evolution of the construction industry because uh, construction with time has changed. So this, uh, what we see right now is not what it used to look like yes. before. So let's also touch on the evolution <coughs> of the construction industry. Yes. Actually, uh, you know, Sri Lanka saw a huge advancement in construction when Dr. A. N. S. Kulasing was very active in late 1960s. We did, uh, we, there was a technology called pre-stress concrete, which was not used in some of the advanced countries. But in Sri Lanka, it was like the norm. So he was very good in, uh, you know, continuing with uh, that uh, k- practice. But uh, unfortunately, after 1970, he left Sri Lanka. To, he settled in Malaysia because of various problems. And uh, during that time, we shifted to reinforced concrete to a certain extent. And uh, we continued in a big way. And after 1977, we saw some, uh, imp- you know, a lot of house constructions, but not very large buildings. In 19, early 1990s, we saw uh, tall buildings coming up, like, you know, Bank of Ceylon Tower, then um, World Trade Center, 40-story Twin Towers. And uh, that was the kind of starting, uh, you know, turning point. Because all those are reinforced concrete structures. And we continued the buildings after that you know a lot of buildings came up and uh, you can see now the skyline in Colombo is completely different it's full of tall buildings and uh, the tallest building has 68 floors and uh, that's called Altair and it's a twin tower building next to Naoloka hospital one tower is leaning against the other some people feel, you know, what's going on in this building. It's by a world-famous uh, architect called Moshe. He's an Israeli-born architect, practicing in USA. And it was it's a... Very complicated. Yes, very complicated structure. And uh, it was designed by uh, one of the, you know, best engineers in uh, the world, uh, Mr. Engineer Predak Era. And uh, in Sri Lanka, we have a rule. The rule is, uh, any building in Sri Lanka having more than two floors need the signature of a chartered engineer and then we have categories up to four stories up to eight stories 12 stories up to 20 stories and about 20 stories so the engineers have to show their skills and get the license from our institution of engineers of Sri Lanka and the license is uh, you know is for urban development authority so any building project, no foreigner can sign. It has to be checked and certified by a Sri Lankan engineer. Mm-hmm. So in 2012, I certified 68 story tall twin tower. One is 68 floors, other one is 64 floors. And I certified that building. And uh, I have certified so many other buildings. And uh, there was a, then there was another very good engineer called uh, Nuan Senaka Vanigaratna. He has designed the tallest building in Sri Lanka, which is coming up as the address 606 next to Marina Mall. And uh, he has also designed so many structures in Rajagiri. In Rajagiri also, you can see again, the skyline has changed. Right. So, so it's so many tall buildings around. Colombo, so many tall buildings. So Colombo has, uh, you know, when you go to Melbourne, you go around Melbourne and when you go around Colombo, you see, you don't see much difference because... You know, we also have very tall buildings and uh, building sector we have thrived and then the road sector, we, uh, you know, there was a, uh, we did not have much capacity and uh, there was a uh, groundbreaking study done at Morato University by, by two researchers and uh, that uh, study was to calculate the cost of road accidents and this was done in 19, uh, late 1990s. The study published showed our road sector is severely underfunded. So this led to huge investment according to the master plan of 2005-2006 road development sector master plan. Two things were done. One is upgrading the A and B class roads and, and then upgrading. So when you upgrade A and B class roads, you widen it, you make it really good. 
whereas C and D roads were wide, not widened, they were carpeted. So today Sri Lanka has about 100,000 kilometers of uh, carpeted roads. Out of that, 10,000 is A and B class roads. And another 90,000 carpeted roads, they are not, they are, they, some may be wide, some may be narrow, but they are carpeted. Which means most of the local traffic now use carpeted small roads, C, D, E class roads, and they don't enter the A and B class roads. So the mo traffic movement has improved. Then we have a good, very good expressway network. The only missing link is uh, section 1 of Central Expressway from Mirigama to uh, from uh, Kadotha to Mirigama the, but uh, about 40% 50% work is has already been completed and it will be again started shortly so uh, from Kurunagala to Matala maybe 3 hours to 3 and a half hours once it is done so we have a very good road network so infrastructure wise you know Sri Lankan contractors are very strong they have the equipment and know-how and building wise they are very strong and we have also followed some of the advanced practices that were used in other countries like Singapore, Australia, UK, America but uh, today with the economic downturn we might have to rethink about these practices so I'm going to you know I can we can discuss those uh, in the in the next session of questions yeah. and also professor as you mentioned uh, about the evolution of yeah. the construction industry, about how we see a lot of uh, tall buildings now in Sri Lanka. And uh, let's also touch upon, uh, now speaking of construction, we also look at uh, sustainability as well, yeah. isn't it? Uh, <coughs> because it's important to have that in mind as well as we are looking at a country which has to be greener yeah. and uh, also preserve it for the future generations. So, uh, what uh, Let's also touch on the sustainability and environmental considerations in the field of construction. Yes, uh, it's a very good question and pertinent question. And uh, actually, uh, in Sri Lanka, we have looked after our environment reasonably well. So Sri Lanka is one of the greenest countries in the world. So we can be proud about it because though we have lost our forest cover from 50%, or 60% in 1948 to less than 20% today still we are people are growing trees so although we don't have a virgin forest cover still we have trees plenty of trees everywhere but uh, certainly we have to actually uh, plant more trees because trees will clean our air so trees are very valuable but in the construction industry we cut trees as well but uh, it is yeah, no it is not a big problem if you look at Sweden okay. Sweden was covered with a ice cap of 2 kilometers of thickness 30,000 years ago so Sweden did not have a single tree and then ice cap melted 11,500 years ago and uh, Sweden started to get trees those are the special trees that will grow in very cold climates and uh, then Sweden thought, okay, now we have massive land, we are going to plant trees. We are going to uh, tree plantations. And we are going to cut the trees, sell the trees, earn money. And today, Sweden exports the most quantity of timber in its history, but it still it has the highest forest cover. Why? Because they are growing tre trees. They are growing forest. And that's the kind of approach we need in Sri Lanka. Because timber is a wonderful construction material and we use it everywhere. Even in tall buildings, where the building is concrete, sometimes we might line the floor with timber. So timber is needed. And then, when it comes to sustainability, I can tell you about a landmark project that we did in 2007-8 EDA for uh, mass holdings and it's called Thuruli and anybody interested in that uh, can down just type the clothing factory in Sri Lanka PDF under uh, Google and you can download a 90 page document on that 
द स्पेशलिटी ऑफ दैट इज देस अ स्पेशल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन यू एस ए कॉल यू एस ग्रीन बिल्डिंग काउंसिल दे सर्टिफाइड द बिल्डिंग्स दे से सर्टिफाइड बिल्डिंग्स सिल्लो बिल्डिंग्स गोल्ड बिल्डिंग्स प्लेटिनम बिल्डिंग्स प्लेटिनम इज ऑलमोस्ट इम्पॉसिबल टू अचीव बट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर बिल्डिंग एम्प्लॉइंग एट हंड्रेड टेक्सटाइल और गार्मेंट फैक्ट्री एम्प्लॉयज is ranked as the first world's first new factory with lead platinum certification so in sri lanka we have landmark projects and world's refurbished lead platinum building is also in sri lanka so so in sustainability sector you know aspects we have done a lot and at Un- department of civil engineering university of marotu we have done lot of research to develop alternative materials so one of the key areas that we are working is converting waste to building materials so you get a wa- you get a waste material like a crushed rock or it can be ready form we convert it to building material and use it in buildings so finally what you have in building is not uh, original minerals it is it is uh, some waste like you know fly ash it can be fly ash it can be ready form it can be uh, you know used earth many things can be converted once you mix uh, waste with cement and sand you can convert it to a very good material suitable for walls so a lot of work has been done in sri lanka and uh, you know anybody interested can download lot of uh, information just typing uh, you know university of marotua department of civil engineering and then you know you you can dig deeper and uh, download lot of information on these uh, sustainable practices and sri lanka in sri lanka we have done extremely well in that aspect and also professor i have seen uh, these vertical gardens yeah is that the concept also encouraged uh, yeah actually uh, one of the key buildings uh, is a uh, clear point rajagiri you know it's in rajagiri you can see a green green color building every every floor has a large balcony and in the balcony you get trees growing so this vertical garden concept is uh, very much applicable to tropical climatic conditions and uh, we have actually developed that uh, to a great extent uh, because you know the in the tropical garden concept or vertical garden concept what we do is uh, we have to provide a balcony at each floor level mm-hmm. and on the balcony we create the garden because we can't create the garden successfully on the facade of the building but when you try to do that uh, you know these roots can damage the facade and you can run into lot of problems but so basically what you need is a building with balconies and on the balconies you create the garden with creepers you know falling uh, on the side of the balcony and it looks like a green green building but actually it's a what you see is not the actual facade what you see is the balcony and the actual facade is maybe 2 or 3 meters behind so that's a new co- new concept that is ca- fast catching up in the world because uh, this this plants can uh, t- clean the air and you get uh, because at the moment we are having a problem uh, about uh, 250 years ago when the industrial revolution started the world's uh, carbon dioxide level was only 270 parts per million million to date has come up to 420 the threshold is 600 when this exceeds 450 to 470 we might get some uh, uh, climate changes that we cannot reverse so those gen- dangers are there so so you know we have to do everything today to plant trees on sri lanka is a small country but if everybody would do it in the world we can have a we can create a massive carbon sink that will absorb start absorbing the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and make planet earth a more build, uh, you know livable place so we will continue with this discussion yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, 
after the downturn uh, you know uh, the price of materials have gone up in a big way and the investors have thought we are going to put all these uh, projects on hold so people stopped investing in the construction industry so uh, how can we make it or work or revive it so that's a question so you know, for that you know we have to understand the fundamentals of our construction industry if you look at our construction industry let's say you know we buy we have to buy sand metal cement to do a construction now let's say we buy 100000 worth of materials some bags of cement some uh, sand some aggregates uh, the metal now to turn on bricks so convert this to a building how much labor you need the labor cost is only 35000 rupees maximum 40000 which means sri lanka is a country where the material is very expensive labor is relatively cheap now let's look at australia how much you have to pay a construction laborer a skilled laborer 50 dollars or 10000 rupees per hour so you have to spend at least 100000 rupees per day when you consider insurance all the other costs so to employ a, a person in australia cost 100000 rupees whereas in sri lanka it costs only 5000 rupees all is that so but what has happened in, lately in 2015 onwards is we have copied advanced technology from australia singapore which are actually meant for countries with high labor cost in the countries with high labor cost we don't care about the amount of material that we use because that is very cheap but in sri lanka you know we can't do that our material is expensive so we can't use materials a lot because to come out of this problem to reduce the construction cost up to 50% for a building we have developed a method called lightweight building systems so the same building looks the same but the weight is 50% the moment weight is 50% means we are we are we are paying for the weight or the volume when the weight is 50% cost is 50% so what has happened is the to construct 1 square meter the cost used to be around 100000 rupees per square meter before covid today it has gone up to 20000 but the moment we adopt our new technology that is developed at moroto university where the weight of the building is made 50% by using very advanced technology where the designs are done complying with the modern euro codes euro codes are the most advanced building standards in sri lanka or codes in sri lanka and all the designs are done according to that but still the weight of the building is 50% cost of the building is 50% means we can do construction pre covid prices today which is a big uh, achievement yeah so if you can do the construction pre covid prices it's a big achievement and the moment the investors know okay we can do the construction pre covid prices they will start moving to the industry and we can revive the industry in no time and that's the need of the hour so basically the technology is there and uh, we are working very hard to you know give the technology to the i- engineers so every wednesday 7 o'clock to 8:30 i conduct a lecture uh, via our institution of engineers sri lanka civil engineer sectional committee lecture series and we teach these methods how to do it because we want to make sure it's all done free to make sure that engineers get the knowledge so that we can revive the industry Exactly. Yes. So, with that, it's time for us to wind up this very interesting yes. uh, conversation on the construction industry. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Sushil Jaya, for being part of the program of the hour. And we were talking about the construction industry with the professor, the professor of civil engineering, who is in the hall tomorrow. And we.
Okay, that is Dr. Rovish. Thank you, Sharifa, and that was an insightful uh, program. And uh, in the coffee hour today, we were joined by our special guest, Senior Professor Tishan Jai Singer from the Department of Civil Engineering, University of Muratua, interviewed by Sharifa Tahir and produced by Indira Navagamua.